Well, good evening. My name is Josh Madrinsky. I'm the pastor here at St. Giles, and I just want to welcome you. And this is part of our St. Giles concert series, and we're just delighted that you're with us here this wonderful spring evening. I think this is a beautiful evening for music, right? And our hope every time we get together is that somehow, some way, through the arts, we get drawn into beauty. We just believe that there is something about beauty that just pulls people together in ways that is unimaginable. And so as we begin tonight, we have a, a wonderful concert. And I know this because we snuck in early and listened to y'all warm up a little bit. Um, and, and I have to say, my, my daughter was with me and I could see her shaking her feet with excitement. And she said, this is going to be good. And I, it is going to be good. It's going to be wonderful. And we're excited that you're joining us. We have uh, some ensembles from the Chamber Music Program at VCU, and it is going to be wonderful. So thank you all for, for joining us, for playing this evening. We look forward to it. And I would like to turn it over to Dr. Magdalena Adamek. Am I close? Okay, all right. So. Hello everyone, it's so nice to see such a lovely, enthusiastic audience and I'm waving to everyone who's watching from home. I know how it feels to watch concerts from home because I've, I've done it 
quite a lot over the past two and a half years and also played live stream concerts which feel completely different. You pretty much play to the camera and not knowing who is behind it, but this time we have people in house. So first of all, I wanted to thank the pastor, uh, the staff, and of course, um, last but not least, uh, Mr. Linus Ellis for hosting us. Today we have a um, um, uh, music evening uh, consisting of program for solo instruments as well as chamber. Uh, I'm somehow in, got, got, as I said, en entangled in it, although I was supposed to just coordinate. Um, the reason is because two of the students who are present here are part of my advanced chamber music class. Uh, this class has, um, has been in existence for a couple of years and has gone through different stages. That's how I can put it. Um, so um, at first, before COVID happened, we had large groups exploring very challenging repertoire. Right now, it's a class when students who are preparing their degree recitals or they're about to play recitals work in depth on at least one movement of a challenging, a high level, a substantial piece with me. And I do a double job. I coach from the piano and I play with them. Uh, we also have a, a students from piano ensemble class, which I also teach, and we have a couple of so lovely soloists. And of course, uh, the evening is gonna be finished with a brass ensemble, who is uh, coached by Professor uh, Ross Walter, who might be watching us online, I don't know. If yes, hello, Ross. Uh, so let's get Nick started. So we have a lovely pianist to begin the show, um, Hayu Liu. Um, she's going to play some Schubert for us. This is Hai Yu, and I'm from China. I also belong to the VCU uh, Music Department. Today I will play the Schubert D64, the second movement and the third movement. The second movement, I feel like this moment, like this period before, between the afternoon and evening, very calm and beautiful. The third movement is like a party, just enjoy it.
Hello, my name is Lisa Niemeyer, and I am a student at VCU. I am pursuing my second bachelor's degree. My first is a BA in voice, and this degree is a Bachelor of Music in Piano Performance. Today, I'll be playing the fourth piece of six that Enrique Granados composed in 1911 after being inspired from viewing the paintings of Francisco Goya. When I perform this piece, it's called The Nightingale and the Maiden, and when I perform this piece, I envision a young woman sitting in a garden under the moon and the stars and perhaps some garden lights. And she's sitting there trying to figure out if this person she loves could possibly adore her back. And so her emotions run the gamut from sheer ecstasy at that thought to utter despair in case the opposite is true and everything in between. And then the nightingale comes and says, don't worry, it will all be okay. Enrico Granados, Goyesca number four.
Hello, my name is Alex Truslo, and um, Dr. Adamic and I are going to be performing uh, the third sonata for piano and violin by uh, Norwegian composer Edvard Grieg. Uh, and what's so interesting about this sonata is its time frame in the place of Grieg's life. Uh, he only composed three. Um, and between the second and the third, there were 20 years. He wrote the first one and the second in fairly quick succession in terms of composing music. It takes a long time. Uh, and then he said, I'm done with it for about 20 years before coming to this one. And this one really diverts from his um, precedent of his first two sonatas. Um, it's wildly experimental and at times bizarre in the context of being a romantic sonata. Uh, like his first sonata and like his second sonata, it condenses into a very neat little folk song melody in the second movement. And it has echoes of that in the first movement. We're going to be performing the first two movements out of three. It's a pretty raucous first one and a sentimental second.
Hi everyone, my name is Rhett. I'm a junior at VCU and the piece I'm playing for you guys today is called Danza de la Mariposa. It's composed by Valerie Coleman. And a little bit about the piece, Danza de la Mariposa basically means dance of the butterfly and the piece I'm playing emulates that. The composer spent a couple, I believe months in South America observing the wildlife and different species down there. And she wanted to compose a piece that really reflects the beautiful wildlife that is that, in that region. And in the piece, you'll hear a couple different slow metal melodies that are always interrupted by this really fast rhythmic passage that's almost, and it really creates this sort of dance that emulates the wildlife down there.
Howdy, y'all. Um, today I will be playing um, Schubert's uh, Sonata in A minor. Um, if any of our friends out in the audience have perfect pitch, your ears do not deceive you. This arrangement by David Worden, longtime euphonium player in the United States Coast Guard Band and also was, uh, up at Empire Brass for a while, is in C minor. <clears throat> um, I'm going to be playing the first movement here with Dr. Adamic. Um, uh, certainly my favorite movement of the three. You get a lot of, of different colors. This, you get a broad, sweeping uh, melody, which uh, filled with the kind of general char sad characteristic color of minor. And then you get certainly some, some dance-like elements as well. So just a lot of, uh, of fun different colors that you see um, throughout this movement. So I hope you enjoy.
My name is Rachel Dale, and with the help of Lisa Niemeyer, who you met earlier, we're going to perform the, um, oh my goodness, I'm supposed to tell you about myself. That's what I forgot about. I'm a sophomore um, music ed major here at VCU, um, and I'm super excited to play for you all. Lisa has some stuff, actually, to say more specifically about the piece. So obviously, when we think of Schumann, we think of Robert Schumann, right? Well, Clara Schumann, his wife, had quite a musical career of her own. And she wrote these pieces, a set of three pieces, um, in 1853, and they premiered in 1855. And she dedicated them to a very close friend and a virtuoso violinist at the, day, at the time, Joseph Joachim. And she and Joachim uh, took the piece on tour and even played before George V in Hanover. Um, I love this first segment because it's just such a passionate exchange between the piano and the violin. And the final segment is a nod to um, Clara Schumann's husband, Robert Schumann's first sonata for violin.
Greetings and salutations, everybody. My name happens to be Caroline Fry, which is the next person on the program. Um, today, I will be playing for you a piece from Ravel's La Tumba de Couperon. No, Mike's in the way of my face. Okay, so La Tumba de Couperon is a piece by Ravel, and it has six movements in it, and they are all composed, um, they're all Baroque um, dances. So, for example, you have Prelude, you have a Fugue, you have Toccata, so they're all Baroque type movements within the piece. So the piece I'm playing for you today is Four Lane, which is like an Italian folk song, typically a quick 2-4. La Tumba de Couperon was, each movement was dedicated to one of Ravel's fallen comrades during World War I. So uh, Four Lane is dedicated to Lieutenant Gabriel Delu, who was a painter and who was killed in a reconnaissance mission. Please enjoy.
We need to do <clears throat> a little rearranging of the stage for the next piece. And so while we're doing that, I have a couple things I would like to say. My name is Linus Ellis. I'm in charge of the concert series here. And um, I'd like to thank Dr. Adamek for putting this together for us. This is a marvelous program. I am always amazed at the talent that is in the VCU School of Music. It's just, you're wonderful guys. And if there's professional musicians out there, you're looking at your future competition. Um, future programs we have coming. We have a German organist coming here. We have the largest organist, organ in the Richmond area, and it was newly installed less than a year ago, so we've been working on presenting it. And um, so we have a German organist who's coming here on May 13th, it's a Friday, um, and we'll be performing. And then in June, we have a group called Ensemble Lafayette, which is a world-renowned harpist, together with the assistant organist from the Naval Academy. And they've toured around all over the place performing, and we're really lucky to have them coming here. Um, we're going to do the, most of the rest of the summer with organ programs. We have Aaron Patterson coming on July 15th, a local organist, Daniel Stipe, who has played for AGO conventions and all sorts of things, and who helped us with the dedication of the organ, <coughs> will be here August 14th. And another German organist, Amelie Held, will be here September 18th. If you look on the back of your program, and those of you online can't see this, but there is a list of what we call Friends of the Concert Series. Our concert stands entirely separate from the budget of the church. We have to support it by money we raise. And these are people who've donated money. Um, there are several ways you can donate if you want to donate. And anything, if, if just a few dollars, helps us even when we do a program like this, we have to do advertising and all that sort of stuff, and it does run expenses. There are some envelopes that look like this, both in both the back of the church and at this door, and you can put donations in there. If you're going to be donating enough to appear on the list, you need to put your name on it so I know what goes on the list. And, you know, putting $5 in the envelope and no name doesn't really help. I can't get you on the list. But anyway, if, so if, you, if you're able to do that, if you're online or you look at this as a future rerun, you can go to stgiles.org, that's the church's uh, website, go to connect and go down and there's the, there's the concert series listed there. And in that list is places to donate and also ways to look at other concerts because we keep on YouTube, as we will with this program, every program that we do here. So you all can go back and look at your performances and your friends can look. And um, I don't, don't know when I was first starting off performing whether I'd want to do that or not. But <laughs> I remember every wrong note I played. Um, also back in the back and, and over here are some cards that look like this and it just says connection card. And if you'd like to be on our email list or text list for concert programs, fill out one of those. You can either give those to myself or Josh, or there's a box in the back of the church with a slot in it. You can deposit both the cards and the envelopes in if you use those. We really could use your help, but anyway, somebody's going to introduce, you're going to introduce this. <laughs> He's very shy. <laughs> Hi again, everybody. <laughs> Hi. Um, so, we have two pieces for you, we being the tonal energy tuba euphonium quartet consisting of myself, Owen Gadu, and our other euphonium is Indigo Lightborn. And then on tuba, we have Isaac Patton and Terence Gregory. Um, the first piece we're going to be playing for you um, is an arrangement of, of Shenandoah. Um, and it was meant to be kind of a, a melding of a lot of the great uh, choral arrangements of Shenandoah you hear and um, Frank to Kelly's arrangement for um, wind ensemble. Um, and, and 
in addition, another, uh, it was actually an arrangement of America the Beautiful that I heard the, um, the President's own United States Marine Band do and how they floated different patriotic melodies um, through their piece. So I hope you enjoy uh, Shenandoah. Before I talk about our last piece on the program, I wanted to thank everybody here at St. Giles for, um, you know, letting us explore beauty with them in this beautiful space. Um, I want to thank our dauntless professor, Dr. Adamic, um, for fearlessly leading us all here and uh, being a wonderful director of the, um, a lot of the chamber ensembles at VCU. Um, and of course, thank you to you all for being a wonderful audience for us this evening. Um, so our last piece is uh, Dances by John Stevens, who is certainly the most prolific writer for uh, the tuba euphonium quartets or tuba quartets. Um, this piece has uh, three separate dances in it. They're not quite movements, but about as close as you can get to movements without them, uh, that, that's what they're, uh, without them being movements. Um, it's just a blast to play. A, a lot of the Stevens music is, um, that's, I think, he's just, he's just a fun composer. 
So I, I hope that um, we can end the evening uh, making you guys have a little bit of fun here at the end. Thank you.
Once again, can we give our, all of our musicians an applause this evening? It was wonderful. Thank you. Come back and see us sometime. Same to the rest of y'all. Good night. <laughs>